What's up guys, it's Reggie. We're back again today. We got another tutorial video on how I ship bubble mail over tracking. Now, there's a ton of ways to ship. Everybody does it different. Um, there's just whoever you look at does it a different way. Um, so this is just the way I do it. There's not necessarily a wrong way to do it. Um, yeah, so we'll get right into it. So what you're gonna need is two pieces of cardboard. I'll get to that later. Some people, you can use a team bag, um, which is just a bag that holds multiple cards. If you're doing, if you're getting rid of, or if you sold uh, more than, I don't know, however many cards you do for bubble mailer, um, you can stick a certain amount of top loaders and cards in here. Um, I do max four top loaders per team bag or 15 cards per team bag without the top loaders. Um, it's just the most comfortable way the cards can sit without getting bent, damaged. Corners will be nice and sharp when it gets there. Um, so that's how we do it here at Reggie's Cards. Um, but I'm just going to be showing you guys this one card. Um, it's got a bid right now on eBay. It probably already sold by the time I put this up. Who knows? Um, I'm just going to get it ready for packaging right now because I got time and uh, I will show you guys how it's done. Or how I do it, at least. Uh, so you got the card, some painter's tape, some trusty old painter's tape. Um, and I showed you in the P uh, plain one envelope episode of the tutorial. I just do it lengthwise and fold it halfway and do it pretty tight so the card can't move. Um, now, you got different types of bubble mailers. Um, like, this one would probably be like uh, 25 or more, 50 plus cards, something like that. And then these ones are for smaller amounts. This one right here, this tiny one, is perfect. It fits like one card just perfectly inside. Um, so this is the packaging that I'll be using today in this video. Um, but I can do another video of uh, larger amounts if you guys want to see that. Uh, so let me know. Um, I'll put those aside and we'll get right into it. So we got this one, the smaller bubble mailer. And then we got our two pieces of cardboard. Um, I just literally cut up, I had an Amazon box, I cut, and a, uh, I don't even know what this is from, another box, just random, whatever boxes you can find, old, just dig in the recycling bin, find some old boxes that are pretty sturdy, um, so that it won't bend as much. Um, so what I do when I uh, am packaging these, I will stick the card right on the inside, you want it just wider than the card itself, um, so that you don't want it hanging off like this so that it can bend that way or that way. You want it flat on it um, so that there's no bending at all. Uh, what I'll do with these, I'll take two pieces of painter's tape. I'll center it on there and I'll just put it in place so it's not going to move when I'm trying to uh, tape the rest of it together. Um, so it just makes it easier so it's not slipping and sliding in here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll pancake it between these two. So it's like a little sandwich and um, we'll tape it together. Uh, you just kind of make a little cross of tape on here. Make it pretty tight um, so that the card's not moving on the inside. Um, it does help when you tape it down. It doesn't move as much. All right, and then well, I guess I didn't do enough tape. Um, so you want it to go all the way around and kind of meet together in the middle. So we'll do another piece just for safety. All right, right in the middle. And then pretty tight. See how it kind of like bends a little bit right there? That's fine if you're doing it that way because um, I always want it as secure as possible. All right, so then you got it one around like a little belt and then you're gonna to wanna to go right through it. So this one will be a longer piece of tape. Um, I usually just take a bunch of extra so I don't have to do a double piece like I did the first one. Um, I'm gonna do it pretty tight, just like the other side. And then you just wrap it right around and you got a little cross of tape. Now, after this, most people uh, will just leave it like this, but I typically will uh, go around the edge. So what I do when I do that, is I kind of line this tape up right in the middle and then I kind of go about halfway 
and the tape and then I fold it over so that I don't know if something goes terribly wrong that it'll still stay inside the card and I'll just do that on all four sides um, just to make sure super secure not going anywhere extra protection it's better to have extra protection than not enough because the card gets their damage then they want their money back and that's a loss of money for you um, so I'm always super uh, super safe when it comes to shipping I do my best to make sure that it is as safe and secure as possible and so there we go we got uh, these uh, oh my goodness my brother's playing the default dance out in the living room he's playing some dude on Madden right now I don't know what he's doing uh, well, we got this um, so now it's all packaged up. I'll typically write something on there like, thanks for your purchase. Uh, make sure to follow or, or something like that. I don't know. Um, always got to shout it out. And then from there, uh, you write or slap on a label, um, just your return label or return address and the address you're sending to. And then all you got to do from there, slip it in, make sure it fits just like a glove. Now, this is, this is the first time I'm using one of these. These are pretty small. Um, but then you just seal it, rip this off, seal it, and then you are good to go. Um, so, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, if you want me to do any other tutorials on uh, sports cards, let me know, and uh, I'll get it out. Um, but make sure you like, subscribe. And uh, share this with a friend who needs it, because uh, I know I didn't know when I was first back in the hobby how to ship or anything. So uh, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.